Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on experimenting and seeing if we can add some nice electric guitar tracks to this production. And then I think this is this is gonna be the last instrument that I add, although I might play around with some acoustic guitar as well. And then we'll finish this up with the vocals. And then pretty much I would say everything else in the production is gonna be done in step six and step seven as we'll delve into some more experimenting and then really dialing in the mix and finishing this song. But for now, let's just dial, let's just dial in uh, some electric guitar tones into this song and see what we can come up with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just again add an audio track, go input right, and then I'm gonna go to stereo because of the nature of my preferred. So the GTR tool rack is what I wanna use here. And I'm gonna go GTR tool rack mono to stereo. And once that loads up, we should be good. Let's see what we got. There we go. Now we're hearing it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tune it. So let's get this thing tuned. All right, so we got it tuned. Now I'm just gonna basically hit play and then mess around with some presets, mess around with the knobs until really anything, un until anything jumps out at me and catches my attention. So here we go. So That could be an interesting little riff that we layer in with that piano. That's interesting, right? And it could be maybe more in the background. I'm gonna keep that for sure. I like that a lot. Um, so let's keep going. I think if I wanna add any electric guitar here in verse two, it's gonna be that type of super repetitive, just that type of thing. Pictures on my phone, deleted them all. These pictures on my phone, deleted them all, except for one. I made a photograph just to have something physical to Okay, so for there, we'd make it if we tried again. Oh, I need to first delete. Get rid of that. I like to think we'd make it if we tried again. I just wish you were here again. And I That sounds pretty good, right? I mean, again, these are just the things, it's not like this is the final, like every single section I'm recording here is here to stay. We aren't completely done with arranging things and cutting things and keeping things and that type of process. Uh, but for now, I'm just trying to leverage my intuition and come up with something that feels right to me in the moment. And then I can make those executive decisions later on.
so for this, I think I just want to mute it like that. I'm going to want to change it, but I like uh, I like that just as a you know it probably won't be the only electric guitar track there at the end of this, but it's I think it's the perfect layer to uh, incorporate into this part of the song, and it just hovers. It stays on the same note, and that automatically kind of creates tension between the chords moving around on the other instruments, but then this note just staying, just staying the same. So let's see what I can, what I might want to do here in this. Oh, I might kind of want to, I might kind of want to, I might kind of want to um, do kind of what I did before, which was do that, that bend thing. Let's try that again. And I bent it too far for that second one. So just a basic um Swish you here Yeah, I think I wanna do that. Just a power chord, but like up higher here, just the one and the five. I think that could sound good there. Riffing there at the end didn't go too well, but I think the rest of it did. Okay, I think we got, I think that's great. Now what I wanna do for this next instance of an electric guitar is I'm gonna focus on the more adding some rhythm and some chords. So this is gonna be more farther down on the neck and actually adding some chords rather than playing those one or two note lines. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and then that'll create a new track for us. And I'll just turn that down and then we'll see what we can come up with here. It didn't bother me when I was doing those one or two note lines, but now that I'm playing the chords down here, I'm realizing my nails are way too long. So I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I'm gonna clip my nails. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Look at those. Look at those pearly nails. All right, let's keep this going, shall we? Pictures on my phone. 
I think with all that bending, I'm gonna actually tune this again. Tune this guitar, because I was bending the strings a bit earlier. Alright, back to business. I'm trying to think where I want to really incorporate any type of rhythm or full chords in this. Drum a car at 25 is the feeble attempt to feel something good. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And again, this is based on a preset. And so obviously you can't change the sound of the guitar, but we can always change the amp, the GTR tool rack settings after the fact. So the sound itself doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with regards to the chords and the rhythm and all of that. So Okay, something like that could work as a cool texture piece, right? Just to kind of add some energy to this part of the chorus and add a lift to it. And I think that's good. That guitar kind of sounds fire there. Pictures on my phone, deleted them all, except for one. I made a photograph just to have something physical to remain. As I think of a seem to fall apart, why does that thing of seem to fall apart? Now for this, I think I'm gonna add acoustic guitar, but I'm gonna test out. I'm gonna try recording in an electric guitar rhythm chords take and see if that might actually work better. that'll work or not but I'll leave it in there my hunch is I'll probably replace that with an actual acoustic guitar next so predictable, but I like to think we'd make it if we try it again I just wish you were here I like to think we'd make it if we try it again yeah, I don't want those low notes. Those low notes um, are muddying up this overall mix. So I'm focusing more on especially the B, G, and D strings. I like to think we'd make it if we try it again. Finally, got that most basic <laughs> uh, section down, and uh, now let's move on to the instrumental. Yeah, I think I want to do something like that, where it kind of... Oh, come on. Oh my god, dude.
I think I'm going to leave it at that, to be honest with you. We have two electric guitar, electric guitar tracks. The first one we focused more on like some lead stuff, some basic one note, two note lines and riffs. And then for this one, I just focused in on adding some nice texture chords to this production. Now, if I was off camera, if I wasn't documenting this, I would probably go and record more tracks and do more things. But for the purposes of education, I don't think that that's actually that conducive to making this course any better. Because my point in this is to give you as much of a framework and a roadmap for you to follow not to just show off and record 25 different electric guitar tracks and then weave them all into the production, right? That's one of those things that uh, isn't that beneficial to document to that extent. So I'm gonna try to keep things as bare bone, as simple and easy to, di to digest as possible. And then obviously you can experiment as much as you want when you're creating these types of songs yourself. But for now, I'm just gonna keep these two tracks as it is. Now again, we can always adjust and we will adjust the presets and the precise sounds and the amp settings and whatever we're using here in the GTR tool rack on these guitar tracks, right? We will adjust this so that we can get a great final sound. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and hit play through this. That way you can get a good feel for what we got going. Um, I'm gonna actually pan one left and one right. That way you can hear the difference between the two. And that actually might be a version of what ends up happening in the final mix down of the song. But just so you can get a feel for everything that I've created here with these two electric guitar tracks, I'm gonna hit play and play the song from start to finish. Summers are cold, winters are warm, you're not here. Colors are gone, the black and the white is all I see now. Even tequila does a test, but Cold play does it sound right? Trying to cut a 25 is the feeble attempt to feel something good. It's all I just wish you were here again. And I, I just wish, just wish you were here. Mm, what a time, what a time. Pictures on my phone, deleted them all, except for one. I made a photograph just to have something physical to remain. As I think of, I seem to fall apart. Why does everything go? Oh, seem to fall apart. It's so predictable. But I like to think we'd make it if we tried again I just wish you were here again And I, I just wish, just wish you were here mm, What a time, what a time
Now, as you heard there, they're, the guitars are way too dry. We need some reverb on them. We need some more drive and those types of things to help it really blend in with everything else, right? But hopefully that gave you a real sense of how these things are produced, right? Look at all the little sections that are here, right? It's not like I was like, I have to record the entire thing from start to finish. Because I am a multi-instrumentalist, like I play multiple instruments and I totally understand the, the fact that when you do multiple things, you're probably not gonna be excruciatingly excellent at all of them. And so I, you know, I'm competent enough on guitar to really serve the song and know what sounds good. But as you can hear, there's no wild John Mayer stuff happening. Instead, everything's pretty simple, pretty basic. And even if, even if this was John Mayer adding these guitars to this song, I don't know that you would want to go nuts because the guitars in this arrangement on the hierarchy of what is really driving the song, it's the vocal and the piano at the top. And then it's, you know, the drums and the bass, and then it's the guitars. The guitars are not the driving force of this song. So they are very complementary to the rest of the production. And I'm trying to keep it that way. And so aside from the fact that I'm not as skilled as John Mayer, uh, there is also a real value when in keeping things simple, especially the components that are not the main components of the song. So remember that when you're working on your songs, you know, try to think of it in terms of hierarchy, like what is the most important thing? And if it's lower down, if the elements that you're adding in are lower down the hierarchy, don't try to make those super intrusive and complicated. Just make them complementary to whatever is at the top. And that was my focus here. So um, I think I'm gonna give it one more go actually before I doubt, before we dive in and record the official vocals on this song. And that is some, we're gonna add some acoustic guitar to this track, which I think this track is gonna benefit greatly from a acoustic guitar track or two. So let's dive into that. All right, my friends. So now we are going to focus on finishing up the recording phase of this process. And we are going to record a couple acoustic guitar tracks as well as dial in the official vocals for this song. Now, before we dive into that though, I do wanna make some a couple very key points here with regards to using multiple instruments and thinking like a producer, especially if you aren't necessarily a multi-instrumentalist, if you don't have a plethora of instruments or you just don't have the skills yet to play multiple instruments. There are a couple ways that you can bridge that gap. One of those is if you are good at, let's say keys and you like producing and adding in synth stuff and piano stuff, then if you wanna add acoustic guitar or electric guitar to your song, find a friend and team up with somebody else to sort of bring that to fruition. Same thing goes for, for drums or background vocals or even vocals in general, if you don't like to sing or you don't even wanna do the vocals. There are a lot of different flavors for how you can take a song from start to finish. This doesn't have to be a one person process. I'm that type of person, I love just working by myself and doing everything alone. I'm not the best collaborator in the world, so I'll just be, I'll just be honest with you about that. But a lot of, I know a lot of you watching this aren't that type of personality. You really do like to collaborate and bring other people on board with the music you're working on. So don't run away from that. Make sure that you lean into it, especially if your friends or your, the other musicians that you know have skills that you don't have, because then you can sort of team up, you can work together and create something that is better than if just one of you were to try and create that song from start to finish. So that is one thing I want you to ponder on and uh, perhaps devise some sort of plan for how you can incorporate uh, other musicians and utilize their skills, especially if it's a skill that you're lacking in. The other thing I'll mention here is don't be afraid to use virtual instruments, especially with the quality that we have nowadays. So think about if you are lacking in your acoustic guitar and electric guitar skills, for example, Native Instruments has some incredible virtual instruments software where they have like actual recorded patterns that can fit within any tempo, that can um, play along with your song. And this is especially great if you are adding the guitars as an extra texture piece, right? It'll become a bit monotonous and not quite nuanced enough if that could, if you're always using those pieces of software for the leads, for the main 
component of your songs. But if you're just trying to add a texture piece, like a little electric guitar arpeggio or an acoustic guitar track that just blends in, that adds it again as this like texture piece, then do not be afraid to utilize that, especially if you don't yet really have a musician friend who can help you in those skills. Maybe you just don't know of anybody who plays guitar or at least who would know how to add that track to your song in a way that you would like. You can always use these instruments. And I know, again, Native Instruments, is, Native instruments has some really cool stuff. And bass guitar is the same way. Bass guitar, you can find incredible, realistic sounding uh, VSTs for bass guitars. I forget what it's called, but there's one, I think it's mod something. Um, I think it starts with an M, M bass, something like that, that you could perhaps look into as well. So to encapsulate what I've been saying here, I don't want you to get too rigid. Do not be afraid to take advantage of tools that are out there, especially if those tools can help compensate for a skill that you lack. Now let's actually dive in and let's record some acoustic guitars, shall we? So let me grab, I'll open up. So I already have my session here. I'll just add a quick audio track, make sure the input is correct. Grab my headphones, testing one, two, and then I'm going to move this microphone down to here. And then I'm going to grab my guitar here in a second. Now, when it comes to mic placement on an acoustic guitar, where should the mic be or which mic should you use? The main thing I'll say is just like, don't overthink it. At the end of the day, the performance matters so much more, right? As long as you, as long as what you're playing fits the song well, then that is what you should be aiming for. That should be more of your focus is really dialing in what you're trying to do with the instrument itself. That said, when it comes to microphones, I'm just using my versatile Aston microphone here that I'm gonna also be using for my vocals. So it's a very versatile uh, mic. And it's also, um, for this track specifically, the guitar is not going to be the primary instrument of the song. We already know that because the piano is going to be the primary instrument. This is just going to be a complementary texture component to the song to kind of help fill it out. And so it's also for that reason that it doesn't matter as much as you would think when it comes to mic placement. But the one thing that I will say about mic placement, and I learned this a few years back, and then I've just used it ever since pretty much without even thinking about it since, is put your microphone basically where it's positioned directly in front of the sound hole on your guitar, but then angle it towards the 12th fret. So it's in front of the sound hole, but it's angled towards the 12th fret. And then that is just how I've always <laughs> recorded my acoustic guitars. I only use one mic on acoustics. I, I don't like to deal with stereo microphones. Um, I would much rather, if I want to do anything that has a stereo sound, I'll just record two takes and pan one left and pan one right. So. If, if, if I were you, I would not be concerned at all about doing any type of stereo mic setup on acoustic guitar. All right, so now um, let me see what we got. Let's see if I can hear myself here. Summer's a cold. Winter's warm, but you're not here The colors are gone, the black and the white is all I see now Even tequila does a test by Even cold play does a Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically play along uh, when the chorus hits and my first focus is going to be just to get some rhythm patterns down. And then once we get those and I'm going to experiment then with perhaps playing. Um, one idea I have is to double over that piano line, that piano melody in that instrumental section and to double over it. So, you know, to do that type of thing, I think that could sound really cool when the instrumental hits. But first, I am just going to focus in on recording a couple rhythm parts to kind of fill out this song, especially in the chorus. I know that I don't need a guitar here in the verse, but when the chorus is hit, I do want to, I think, add this track to it. Drum a car at 25 is the feeble attempt to feel something good. So I just wish you were here again. And I Wish, wish you were here. Mm -hmm. 
idea there but I did screw a couple things up so I'm just gonna restart it at verse 2 here pictures on my phone deleted them all except for one made of photographs to have something physical Whoops, missed that, missed that beat there. Um, I'm gonna make sure this sounds good. I There may have been a couple weird buzzing things where I made some mistakes on the string, so I wanna make sure we, we're sounding good here. Yeah, no, we're good, we're good. Um, there may have been a couple low strings that accidentally rung out there, but this is gonna be, again, a texture piece, so I'm just gonna edit that out. Um, and I can say that I'm not afraid to say, oh, I'll just leave that for later because this is not the lead vocal. This is not that lead piano track. This is not the main track. So you can play that game. You can be a bit more lenient and less perfectionistic when you are recording these kinds of tracks that are not a part of the core foundation of the song. So. Think we'd make it if we tried again. I just wish you were here. For this, I don't think I want acoustic guitar, to be honest with you. I think I want to wait for the first half of the chorus, but then in the last half, see here I think it sounds good. Um, if we do some work on that electric guitar that's playing that chord, um, and then we have the piano and the vocal. And then here I would bring the guitar in. that a lot so start here the idea there I screwed up that F minor chord um, so I'm just gonna restart that
All right, I do like what we have there. Um, there may have been a couple places where I wasn't exactly on. So just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and just record the exact same thing on a new track. And then, um, and then we'll be good with that section. All right, I love that, that was perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is basically approach approach it now in the in the format of doubles so i'm going to double track these acoustic guitars here so we already have basically just in case i want to have these this guitar track as doubles instead of just one guitar track. I don't know which I'll do yet, and we'll figure that out as we finalize the mix. But I do want to be able to record double track guitars because very often it will sound uh, better than to have two than it is if you, if you just have one uh, guitar track. So I'm going to double this. We're going to layer in an extra guitar take and just record the same thing that we already did, and I'll just run through it. All right, perfect. So we got those acoustic guitars down, or at least the rhythm ones. And now I'm gonna experiment with playing around with some one note or even two note melodies, you know. Um, I'm gonna, the first thing that I know I wanna try and that I wanna record is a track that basically, again, as I mentioned, it doubles over that instrumental piano. So let's go ahead and record that. All right, so almost had it, so let's give that another shot. I think that is going to be a beautiful layer uh, in with that piano. Um, I'm just going to listen around a little bit, see if anything pops in my head as far as uh, what I might want to add, or if there are any other places I might want to add acoustic guitar. My phone deleted them all, except for one. I made a photograph. Yeah, I'm not, honestly, I'm not really hearing anything. I think we're good. Uh, I don't think adding acoustic guitar in any other places in this song is really going to add very much. But one more thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do before we move on to the vocals is I'm going to just double over that lead guitar part uh, that layers in with that piano. Just again, just so we have two tracks in case I want a stereo effect on this. So uh, I'm just going to double over it. So here we go. Perfect. I love that. Let me move this microphone up to a good place. One thing that I did forget to mention is I 100% do not recommend. In fact, I just beg you, please do not record acoustic guitar plugged in directly into your interface. Unless you know that that is precisely the sound you want. I know there are some songs out there. I know like the Japanese house, for example, has a couple songs where it's like, that is definitely a plugged in acoustic guitar, but it works. But if 95 to 99% of the time when you want a authentic acoustic guitar sound, please just set up a mic, even if it's a crappy setup in a terrible room with a terrible guitar and a $50 mic, 
the chances of that sounding good is way higher than if you just plug an acoustic guitar directly into your interface and try to play chords. That is just a fast track way for your guitar tracks and your song at large to sound amateur. So I 100% advise against that. And I did want to throw that in here because I did forget to mention that earlier. So my friend, that is it when it comes to the acoustic guitars. Now let's move on to vocals.